started with a letter from Stage Fright from Anne Buchanan to the committee of Dundonald Castle asking if they could put this play on because there was a difficulty in getting the normal venue in Irvine. This was enthusiastically received by the committee. How did it develop from here as an idea? I then took the reins up uh, on behalf of the committee and discussed things with regular meetings with Anne Buchanan uh, to look at the logistics of this, of the organisation. which was the 25th of June this year. Um, we arrived in the afternoon. We set up, um, as I say, the dressing room facilities were not ideal. They were based behind two large canvas tarpaulins. Um, I had a chemical toilet, which was set up in, would you believe, the dungeon of the castle. It was a very valuable piece of equipment that day, let me tell you. <laughs> the two places which we chose to do in Dundonald Castle were originally chosen by our artistic director, Janice Rayside, for our June production last year. There were two plays written by Glasgow author Isabella C. Ray. Janice worked very hard with rehearsal. Um, she works full time and sometimes it's, it's not easy uh, when you're particularly tired and working with a group of of actors who some of some of whom perhaps were not enamoured with rehearsing in a cold drafty castle. Rehearsals in Tundonald Castle, I admit, were very uncomfortable at times. It was extremely cold, there are no glass in the windows, and the slightest breeze blowing on the hill which Tundonald Castle stands upon, you felt everything. There were no dressing room facilities, obviously, it's a 13th century castle. Um, the lighting was not ideal. There were a number of problems which we seemed to manage to overcome quite nicely. And you, and you, what? Our secretary Anne, extremely hard working, for this particular production, practically organised the entire thing herself. She was responsible for arranging for the the drapes, the, the tarpaulins which we used, um, transport, um, we went together to one of the local supermarkets to arrange the, the wine for the buffet, the hire of glasses. So the
The manager of the, the visitor centre, James, was very helpful with the, the setting up of various things within the castle for us. Um, he helped to arrange the, the drapes in the castle, the, the actual hanging of the, the, the drapes within the castle. He arranged for us to use particular pieces of equipment. <laughs> Not getting into a lot of hassle. When I commute to Mosford, I do as a boy for a dagger between the ribs. I'm taking along in very late. You must avenge me! Dundonald Castle is the birthplace of the Stuart dynasty in the late 14th century. The castle sits on a hill that's been inhabited for upwards of 5,000 years. It's a very rich historic site. It sits on a mound which was millions of years ago a volcano, 10,000 years ago a mile of ice above our head, 9,000 years ago that has gone and the earliest hunter, gatherers, fishers are coming up the Clyde, going up to the top of the hill seeing the spectacular views which on a clear day can let you see as far as the island Jura about 65 miles away or Ben Lomond 45 miles away and clearly people thought nice sight, easy to defend this is good, we will settle here. And the archaeologists found evidence of all of this. There was later a Norman Morton Bailey castle after the conquest of England by William the, the Norman. The Scottish king invited Normans and Anglo-Norman families into Scotland to help in the suppression of the, the Gallic peoples in the West and in the Highlands. And they settled in quickly, Scottishized their names, and they were great administrators. They built these stockades, really, almost like a Western stockade, the timber castle, the mott being the mound for the Lord's Tower and the bailey being the little village that would uh, back this up. That of course being timber wouldn't last, uh, that, that, that had long gone and was replaced by a stone castle in the early 13th, perhaps middle 13th century. A quite spectacular stone castle with B-shaped towers and rounded towers and curtain walls and so on. And in its day was probably the third most important fortress in Scotland after Edinburgh and Stirling. 1371, Robert II, grandson of King Robert the Bruce, uh, becomes King of Scots and he remodels the castle uh, as his home. Essentially it becomes a hunting lodge for the Stuarts. The summer residence was Rothsey Castle on the Isle of Bute and the winter residence would have of course been the palace at Dunfermline which in those days was the capital of Scotland. As everyone knows, the king sits in Dunfermline to drink in the blood red wine. The castle, as we see it today, is much reduced. Uh, perhaps there's 45 feet of stonework missing from above it. There are no bed chambers, there's no roof. Uh, but what does remain is a most spectacular barrel vaulted ceiling uh, in the, the lower level of the castle. It was actually the, the, the ceiling of the lake hall or the lower hall beneath the Great Hall, which must have been a most impressive chamber in it today.